Hey YouTube, Jonathan here. I got another Axis and Allies video for you. In this one, we are going to be looking at uh, strategic bombing, uh, specifically in Axis and Allies 1942, uh, second edition. But I believe that strategic bombing either works the same way or in a very similar way in several other versions of the game, or of this game. Uh, but we're going to be looking specifically at this one. This is a fan-requested video. Uh, I can't remember if it was a couple days ago, uh, but sometime recently uh, w w someone commented on one of my videos asking for this one, and uh, I thought, hey, you know, that's a good idea. So, here we go. So, just a quick comparison. In the original Axis and Allies, and I think in Revised as well, uh, strategic bombing did work differently than what I'm about to describe. In those games, you'd fly your bomber over to wherever the factory is that you want to bomb. The anti-aircraft gun would get a chance to shoot you down. Uh, it gets one roll for every bomber that you send over. For every one that it rolls on those dice, so it gets one die per bomber, and for every one that it rolls on those dice, uh, it shoots down a bomber, bomber doesn't get a chance to do anything, it's just shot down. Now in this game you have uh, your triple A, which, uh, let's zoom in on this piece right here, is like this piece here for the Soviet Union. That is used uh, if enemy airplanes attack the ground forces there, and it can shoot, uh, it gets up to three dice per triple A uh, unit that you have. Strategic bombing works differently. So if you're going to strategically bomb, you have to go after a territory with a factory in it. And factories are always considered to have an anti-aircraft gun. That anti-aircraft gun does not come into play if the ground units are being attacked. Uh, it only comes into play if the factory is actually being strategically bombed. So, just like in other versions of this game, you are going to have the anti-aircraft gun is going to get a chance to to fire back. Not the triple A, but the actual actual factory um, based one that we don't have a unit for, you just have to assume it's there. Now in the uh, other versions, revised and classic, or the preceding versions I guess I should say, um, the early versions, what would happen once that anti-aircraft gun misses, the attacker would roll one die for each bomber, and whatever the total uh, came up, so let's say you have two bombers and one you roll a two and the other one you roll a four, that six total, that uh, is the number of IPCs that get removed, uh, taken away from the person you're bombing. That's how it was originally in Axis and Allies. Now that has changed, certainly changed in this version. Um, I can't remember when it changed originally. It might have been Anniversary Edition, but don't quote me on that. I don't have a copy of that game to double check. But anyway, in this version of the game, uh, it does work very differently. So AA gun still fires, like I described, but after that, within your remaining bombers, you still roll just like you would. And let's say that uh, you have those same rolls. You send two bombers, you roll a two, and you roll a four. Instead of the person you're attacking having to immediately give up six production, the factory itself actually gets damaged. Now, uh, there's a little bit of math that you want to take into account. Let's look at Caucus, for example. Uh, the territory is worth four. Russia can put up to four units there per turn. You can cause up to eight damage to that factory. Now, what does that mean? So for every point of damage that you cause, that is one less unit that Russia can build there. So if you put cause four units of or four uh, uh, units of damage there, then Russia, unless it takes a specific action uh, to counter that to repair that factory, cannot build anything. And you're able to continue piling on the damage, of uh, reducing that factory to even more rubble you can cause up to eight damage uh, to caucus, which means that uh, Russia is both going to have to do something to build that factory back up uh, to just a basic standard, and then it's going to have to build it up to actually produce units out of it. 
Now, what if it's not Caucasus? Let's look at another territory. Let's look at India. India is being strategically bombed. You'll see that it's worth three IPCs, which means that uh, it can take up to six damage. If uh, your strategic bombing rolls cause more than six damage, it does not stack. That is the maximum that you can do to it. Now, what do these opposing sides do? Uh, what does Russia do? What does England do if their factories are being strategically bombed? Well, they could choose to do nothing and uh, say, well, we have better things to spend our money on. We're not going to worry about it because it is going to cost money to repair it. So they could just leave it bombed. That is certainly an option. And then not they would not be able to produce anything out of those factories if there's been enough damage. But that is an option open to them. They don't automatically lose IPCs like in earlier versions of the game. They can also pay... Uh, at the beginning of their turn to repair those factories. So you might be wondering if four points of damage prevents anything from being built in caucus, why would I want to cause more damage than it if you're the German player? Because Russia is going to have to pay more to fix it. So let's say you do the full eight IPCs of damage to it. Russia's got to pay four um, and it still can't build anything, but it's got to pay those four, and only after that is the additional IPCs that it pays to repair it going to allow it to place units there. So uh, if they want to produce one unit in caucus and it has been completely demolished, eight points of damage, they're going to have to pay five IPCs to repair it uh, up to, you know, baseline of zero, and then one more so that they can put one unit, at least one unit there, and two more for two units, three more for three if they wanted to fully repair it, that's eight IPCs. And for the Soviet Union, that is substantial, unless they're doing really well somewhere else, which I doubt if Germany's flying a bunch of bombers over, unless it's some sort of um, last-ditch effort that Germany's doing. Um, that's really going to put the Soviet Union in a poor, uh, poor, poor shape. Now, in earlier versions of this game, I wasn't a huge fan of strategic bombing uh, because bombers, first off, were a lot more expensive. I want to say they were 18, I'd have to check it up, but they're, they were well more expensive than the 12 that they cost in this version of the game. And if you're talking averages, uh, let's say that we, one out of six times, your bomber is going to get shot down, you know? Your opposing player gets one roll for every bomber. Uh, the odds are one out of six times it's going to come up as a one and they're going to shoot you down. You, on the other hand, you're going to have various rolls. Uh, you're six times flying over. They're going to vary from one to six, but you're probably looking at an average of uh, three or four uh, overall. So let's just say that you average three IPCs worth of damage on six trips and then you get shot down at the end of your sixth trip. Well, you've caused 18 points of damage, and uh, your bomber cost 18 production, so I never really felt like that helped you out a whole lot. Plus, if your bomber's doing that, it means it can't do other things. Now, speaking strictly by the math, one could argue that you're actually going to average 3.5 uh, IPCs, but I don't think really that makes a huge difference in the end. Um, and I never really found it that useful in those early games, uh, early versions of the game. I could see potentially it uh, being more useful in a game like this if used intelligently. Um, I haven't used it a whole lot, so uh, if anyone has any, any suggestions or addendums that they like to add, please feel free. But to me, just kind of eyeballing at what I would probably do if I had a couple bombers, let's say I'm, let's continue using the I'm Germany and I'm going to strategically bomb the Soviet Union, I probably would uh, keep the bombers, you know, in reserve, keep them doing what I need them to do, whether it's fighting the British Navy or just counterattacking in land battles, until I'm ready, until maybe I, I have uh, a couple bombers, more than just the one I start with, and then... I would wait until a turn that I'm really going to put the screws to the Soviet Union 
or position myself to or something like that. Wait till the time is right, essentially. And then I would send in my fleet of bombers um, to maybe go after Caucasus so that Russia either is forced to pay a heavy price, you know, six, seven, eight production to get it back up to um, normal standards, uh, which is going to take a huge chunk out of their income. Or if they don't, my army is positioned to sweep in and take this strategically valuable uh, spot. So timing would be a big component of it. Um, I don't think that I would really recommend just doing it for the sake of doing it. Um, but if it serves a tactical purpose, I know that might seem kind of strange using strategic bombers for a tactical purpose. Um, but that is how I would uh, approach it if I were to use uh, bombers for strategic bombing uh, in this version of the game. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, this is not something that I tend to do a lot, but I do see its uses. And since we had a fan special request for it, I did want to get this video up before too much time has passed. If anyone else has any recommendations for videos or thoughts on this video, uh, go ahead and please leave it in the comments section. I'll take a look and I'll see uh, what we can do in terms of future videos or get your questions answered. Thanks everybody.